Hello and welcome to the Comedy Road Show. I'm your host, Stephen Bigelin. My next guest, David Sharp, is visiting our Los Angeles studio from Ventura, California. Welcome to the show, David. Thank you for having me, Stephen. You're welcome. Uh, tell us about yourself. Uh, I moved here from uh, Illinois just recently. I've lived in California for about three months. I was originally born here, but I've taken a kind of long route uh, that's led me back to the Southern California area. How'd you get into comedy? Uh, well, I've done a lot of different kinds of theater throughout my life. Uh, I did traditional theater and things like that through um, childhood and high school, college. Uh, then I started wanting to write more, not, not act as much, not have to say other people's words, but get a chance to say my own. Uh, so I started um, looking at more alternative kinds of performance. Uh, I wrote poetry, did uh, poetry performance for a long time. And finally got led to stand-up comedy, which is where uh, I felt like I was able to be myself, to uh, write and perform, have control over my material and how I choose to perform it, and have a good time. It's fun, not just uh, work. Tell us uh, which comedians uh, influenced you. When I was a kid, uh, the first people that I really liked were Bill Cosby and George Carlin. Uh, Bill Cosby himself was... Uh, just I couldn't couldn't get enough of it. The, the dentist bit uh, was one of my favorites, and then George Carlin. When I was like twelve, thirteen, starting to you know hit adolescence, uh, I saw one of his specials at my cousin's house on HBO. You know where they could <laughs> swear, and uh, he said a phrase. I know you like to keep it clean here, uh, but this phrase is just burned in my mind. It involves Mickey Mouse and something made of rubber going somewhere and making uncomfortable. And uh, I was like, you're allowed to say this? People are allowed to say this kind of stuff? Like on stage in front of cameras? Like that's allowed? Uh, that just blew my mind. Um, and then when I started really getting into stand-up comedy uh, for myself, it was something I wanted to do. Uh, Maria Bamford was one of the first people that really turned me on. Uh, Mark Marin uh, is one of the people that both from stand-up and WTF that's taught me a lot about um, what I want to do with my comedy, what I you know, kind of having a moral or ideological base to it in a way, uh, as far as being personally driven, driven by kind of ideas and observations more than absurdism or exaggeration. Uh, and, uh, you know, of course, like anybody at this point in time, uh, I enjoy Louis C.K. or Patton Oswalt. Uh, they're pretty, pretty much at the top of the game stand-up wise at this point. I wish I could write jokes like Anthony Jeselnik like he's, I, I love listening to him, I love his, his, his comedy, his persona, but it's not something that I personally feel like, you know, I can't write those really just tight, perfect, concise jokes. I'm better at uh, stories and ob observations and things. You've done performance art and you've also done uh, stand-up comedy. Yep. Um, could you name the places that you've uh, done both of these at? Uh, doing performance art and theater and stuff, uh, performed in the Varsity in Carbondale, uh, did a lot through the Kleinau Theater, which is part of Southern Illinois University, that's a kind of small, uh, not the main stage theater, but that's more for the independent productions. Uh, as far as stand-up goes, uh, Station 13 and Hangar 9 in Carbondale. Out here, uh, I do Flappers a lot, uh, the Ventura Harbor Club. Uh, and then stand up all across uh, various different, you know, bars and lounges across Los Angeles. Your situation is a little different than most uh, comics. Uh, most comics uh, came from a local area and then started going on the road. So you, you've actually been on the road. Now you're coming to Southern California and, uh, and uh, tell us your rationale for this. Well, uh, I was in a small town where we had our own local comedy scene. We had two or three nights a week, uh, which just wasn't really enough for me. You know, I would like to be performing six or seven nights a week if I have my druthers, and probably more than once a night uh, if possible. But that's just not really possible in that area. Uh, you know, you could go to a club in St. Louis, but that's like a two and a half hour drive. Uh, so I came here so that I could perform every night. That there's uh, stuff happening in Ventura every night, and then there's stuff happening in Los Angeles every night. So. Uh, I get up six or seven nights a week, probably do 10 or 15 sets a week, and that's you know something you just can't do other places. It's almost the one place in the world that will allow you to do that many sets. That's incredible. You know, New York, New York maybe. Uh, Chicago, you can do 
five sets a week, you know, maybe seven to ten if you're really, you know, trying hard. But uh, but here it's it's not not even that hard to do ten or fifteen a week because there's so many different places. What makes something funny? <laughs> uh, well, you know, there are a lot of different answers you can give to that. The classic answer might be that like laughter is the result of uh, tension created and then ruptured. Uh, you could also say that irony is a basic juxtaposition of maybe expectation and reality. Uh, you could say that things that are generally funnier when there's a power discrepancy and there's somebody from a lower power uh, speaking up to somebody from a higher power. The jester is the person that's able to make fun of the king, kind of is that mm -hmm. idea. Or it's not funny for kids on the schoolyard to pick on somebody that's like smaller or weaker than them, but it is funny for the smaller, weaker kid to make fun of the popular kids. Uh, that said, there's no real recipe. There's no like, there's no secret holy grail for comedy. <laughs> and once you hold it, once you've found it, you know, once you've drunk from the grail, now you know. Uh, it's all going to be context based. You know, a lot of comedians will have a bad set and they'll be like, ah, oh, this audience, this audience, they're, too, oh, they're so terrible, they didn't get it. This is bulletproof material. Like, I have done this material in so many clubs, I made so many people laugh, like, why aren't they laughing? This is funny, they don't know. And it's so much like your demeanor to these people at, at that time. Uh, I find that I do better with newer material because I'm more invested in it, it's more exciting, it's more energetic. Uh, once people have done their material for a lot of the time, it might be a great joke. It might be a perfect, like, Anthony Jeselnik quality setup punchline joke. But if you tell it like you're bored, if you tell it like you're not that into that joke now because you've told it a hundred times, people aren't going to laugh in the same way. So uh, what's funny is what makes people laugh. And that could be sometimes, sometimes you laugh at things that you're not even proud of. Like, oh, I shouldn't have laughed at that joke. That's wrong. That's wrong. That was terrible. <laughs> But you still laughed at it. So that was funny in a way. The tension was created and then ruptured. And then you can go back and say, I shouldn't have laughed, but you laughed. So, Like the dictator. That was very wrong. But the dictator, yes, absolutely. Yeah, Sasha Baron Cohen, all of his stuff is pushing, pushing the envelope. And, and it's, it's a tenuous balance because, you know, if it's create a tension and rupture it, creating a tension is the tricky part. Like, you're talking about stuff that's socially... Um, awkward or taboo or things that stuff that people don't talk about that's going to be the richest funniest areas that's why so many comedians talk about you know go blue or do blue material because you don't talk about that stuff in everyday life and so just the fact that somebody is up there talking about uh very personal you know using these words like that creates attention that that sets the audience off in a way um, a lot of the comedians that are real geniuses like uh brian regan are people that talk about really mundane things, but in such a way that he can create attention. He can make people invested in these everyday activities. Because people are identifying with it, that it's something that means something to a person. Uh, and if you can create attention that way, then you get a different kind of laugh. Can you tell us the names of some uh, up and coming comedians that are about to break out? People that I that I know on the kind of LA level that are uh, doing open mics and uh, are very funny right now, to me personally, uh, Joe Dosh is a guy that I think is funny. Uh, he's a, a guy that works at Flappers a lot. Uh, young kid, really kind of sweet looking, but just a really dark, acerbic kind of uh, humor to him. Uh, Kieran Diol is a, a lady that I like. Uh, she's very, uh, very intelligent uh, comedy. You know, she's a, she also has a lot of fun when she's up there, which is always something that I like. She's a person that looks like she's enjoying herself. And so even in the times when, like, the audience isn't laughing, you know, it's going poorly, she's one of the people that can turn that into something that's funny so that you're having a good time watching her even if, you know, one particular joke doesn't land. Uh, Andy Sell. Uh, is a guy that I like a lot. He's a uh, he's very sweet. Like he's he's cuddly. He hosts a lot of mics and just makes it like a fun, welcoming kind of atmosphere. You know, when he's doing bits again, he's one of those people that whether the perfect joke of the bit is landing, the fact that you like him, that he's a, a, a fun presence on stage, um, that makes me enjoy his his material a lot. 
How could people keep track of your uh, schedule, where you're performing? You have a, a website or social media? Uh, DavidSandersSharp.com. Uh, Sanders, I should enunciate David Sanders Sharp. Uh, also, Twitter is probably the best way. Uh, or uh, you can uh, subscribe to me on Facebook. Also, we don't even have to be real friends. We don't have to exchange intimacy. You can just subscribe to me, and then it's like you're friends with me. But we don't have to interact. And, uh, and is it consistent on all three of those, David uh, Sanders Sharp? Uh, Twitter is David and Sharp, like uh, like both. I'm both David and Sharp, and it's an abbreviation of Sanders because they only give you so many characters on Twitter. Uh -huh. um, but uh, Twitter, I think, would probably be the best one, David and Sharp. Okay, well, thanks a lot for coming to the show, yeah, and uh, good luck to you out there on the club scene. Thanks so much.